If you sell on Amazon and you want to sell into Italy or Spain, you need to have a certain type of banking infrastructure to sell into those markets effectively. The second, the second objective we had was to make more profit from your current sales. So currently, if you use PayPal, for example, to bring money back from sales, you, you might pay 7% of your revenue away when you uh, bring that money in. Oops. <laughs> Thought I'd switch that off. Um, um, uh, if, you, if you move the money back through, through Amazon's own system, you pay 4%. Very convenient, but can be quite a consideration when you're, um, uh, when you're making international sales. So that was the other objective. The third objective was to reduce the cost of your stock overseas. So if you're buying from USA, China, Europe, to actually get your stock together, well, you might be exposed to a currency a conversion there, and if you're, if you're sending payments to them, you might be paying £20, £25 to send that payment out to, the, to, your, to your suppliers. A big consideration if you're doing it regularly, and if you, if you start to lose 2 or 3% of the value you're sending in the exchange rate loss, well, that's another consideration for you to have. So we're currently providing this, to, uh, this service to over 1,000 uh, e-tailers globally. Uh, the actual product is called an e-tailer collection account. How does it work? Uh, we give you a unique bank account in the market that you're selling your product into. Okay. This means that the online marketplace that you're selling uh, through, or your customers, can pay their, their money or pay your sales directly into that account, importantly, in the currency that it's generated in. So that means if you're selling um, home brewing kits in Germany, uh, you'll price that perhaps in euros, you might get 100 euros for one, maybe, something like that, I'm guessing here, uh, and, uh, and you'll, you'll get 100 euros. You'll, you'll get 100 euros in your bank account uh, that we provide to you. And then, this, the, the, what we do is we then give you the convenience to decide how and when you want to bring that back. So you decide that, not the online marketplace, not your bank, not your customer, it's your, it's your bank account that you have exclusive use of. You decide when you want to pull that back. Um, the difference uh, in, in the exchange rates that you get can be fairly significant. Uh, we're, we're probably 20% of the cost of eBay and about half the cost of Amazon in terms of conversions. So um, I, I work with, uh, with customers, uh, I'm too far, I work with, with, with online sellers every day. Um, I'm not an expert in online retailing, I'm an expert in currency. However, when it comes to online retailing, I think I've got a fairly, uh, fa fairly good amount of knowledge to, 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 to kind of communicate out. Let me, let me start with my top tip number one, which is to when you're going out into the international market, when you're considering expanding your business overseas, what do you do? Well, research the market fully. Really research the market fully. Um, check the category, for example, or, on Amazon or eBay or wherever else you're selling to make sure you can actually sell it. You'll be surprised at how many people have said to me, you know, what's the first thing that I should do? That's probably where I would, would start. Check where you can actually sell. Also check whether you can compete financially uh, and make a profit over a, over a period of time, consistently and sustainably. Um, finally, make sure once you make those international sales, you get your money back effectively. Um, that's, that's really, really important. So, so do research the market uh, fully. My second tip is not to be phased by the competition. Other tips, um, create a personal sale. This is something that I've learned. A lot of customers I see doing that. Um, sell something that can't be imitated. Create a niche offering for your product and make the customer feel as though you are an expert uh, through the responses and the questions that you sometimes get when you're buying these. So the second tip, uh, just to rush through it here, uh, is focus on your strengths um, and do not be phased by the competition. The last tip I have for you, oh, excuse me, the last one's come up, okay. Uh, so let me just run through the last one. So uh, the third one was protect yourself from moving uh, exchange rates. If you buy something from the US, for example, in US dollars, you're paying for it using pounds here, you're converting, and then you decide that you want to sell it into Europe, there might be three months between when you pay for it and when you actually get the money in from it. Well, if the exchange rates have moved during that time, your calculations and your profit will be out massively. You might make a lot more, but the worrying thing is you might lose, and that's what you want to avoid. Uh, so you can use some very simple things like uh, a product called forward contracts to, um, to manage situations like that.